Before listening to this audiobook, please make sure to subscribe. Only 10% of you is subscribed. Thank you and enjoy this wisdom. Reinvent yourself. The power of self discipline. Table of content. Five signs that you need to work on the skill of commitment. Six key examples of self discipline in your personal life. Ten key examples of self discipline. Evaluating your personal boundaries. First step in self discipline. Harness the power of focus. Harness the power of self discipline. Is self control eluding you? Self discipline. Why self discipline is key to success. Why you say yes when you want to say no. Five signs that you need to work on the skill of commitment. Having the commitment to work on a project through completion takes dedication and self discipline. There are a few things that you need to make sure you have if you will to get through a long term project. If you find yourself failing at achieving long term goals, then you may lack a few skills necessary to build up your self discipline. You're always late. Do you have trouble making it places on time? You seem to miss work deadlines? These could be signs that you need to work on your skill of commitment. Having self discipline and being highly committed means that you know how to manage your time effectively. According to Jimmy Burroughs, a popular personal development blogger, managing your time efficiently shows that you have great levels of dedication. During an average 8 hour workday, over 2 hours are spent doing absolutely nothing. Typically, the average American watches 2.8 hours of television every day. If you have time to watch TV or surf the internet but you can't seem to show up on time or finish projects on time, then you probably have commitment issues. You lack consistency. No new skills are learned in under three weeks. It's often said that making a habit needs at least 21 days to complete. If you have a hard time consistently finishing your activities, you will have a hard time building productive habits. Making the effort to be consistent can help you develop the self discipline you need to succeed in life. You never do what you want. Another symptom of a lack of commitment is the inability to do the things you want to do. If you regularly seem to be playing catch up or you don't have time to pursue your dreams, you are probably suffering from a lack of commitment. It is easier to sit down and watch television than it is to start work on your new goals. Lifehack notes that when others look at self disciplined people, They see what they are giving up instead of what they are gaining. Those with high levels of dedication often pursue their dreams proactively rather than reactively. While they may not go out to lunch every day with the co workers, they will take an international vacation with all the money they saved. Doing what you truly want to do is a sign of commitment and dedication to your goals. You're not motivated. If you generally lack motivation, chances are you lack self discipline as well. Because commitment takes long term thinking, it's difficult to be motivated to do the small, mundane activities. If you have a difficult time during your daily grind, I could be that you lack the commitment necessary to find motivation. Truly committed people will find the motivation they need to power through any activity. You don't hold yourself accountable. Finally, one of the biggest signs that you lack commitment is the inability to hold yourself accountable. Accountability applies to both productive and non productive action. 
Someone with little self discipline may look for excuses as to why they were unable to meet their time commitments. However, committed people will be honest with themselves about their situation and actions. IQ Matrix highlights this by noting that it may take an outside source to hold you accountable until you get used to doing it yourself. These five signs that you lack commitment could mean the difference between pursuing your life's dream and living a mediocre existence. If you lack motivation, continually late, and full of excuses, the chances are that you lack commitment. Having no self discipline will lead to a life where you are constantly playing catch up and never get ahead. Mastering self discipline and being truly committed to achieving your goals can lead you down a more rewarding path. It's never too late to build new habits and changing your mindset. You too can have the commitment necessary to achieve greatness. Six key examples of self discipline in your personal life. Self discipline is a character trait that most people admire. As a personality feature, it isn't something you are simply born with. Self discipline is trained over time. One of the easiest ways to train yourself to have greater discipline is to mirror the examples of self discipline in other people. If you're not sure what self discipline traits that other people have, it's okay. Many people have a hard time identifying what elements make up self discipline. Here are six examples of self discipline that people have in their personal lives and that you can mirror to develop your own disciplined life. Create realistic and adjustable goals. For some reason, when people set goals, they think that they need to be set in stone. The problem is that we rarely know how much effort it is going to take to meet the goal until we are already in the middle of our progress. An example given on a personal success blog if you want to write a book and you set yourself up to write 5,000 words a day, you're likely to burn out. Setting small goals that can change as you progress will help you achieve the bigger goal. Instead of forcing themselves to write 5,000 words a day, a person with good self discipline would start small, like 240 words, and then when it is too easy, they add more to the daily target. Self discipline involves constant evaluation. Stabilize your energy. People with high levels of self discipline like to have consistent energy levels. If you have steady energy, you can better budget your time and energy. Most people can achieve this clean energy state by avoiding insulin spikes and watching their caffeine intake. A popular self development blog points out that this may be a bit of a catch 22 as it already takes self discipline to watch what you eat and drink in the first place. Sleep. Don't fall into the trap of thinking less sleep will make you more productive. Sleep connects directly to our impulse control. Our hormones and cognitive functions are all connected to proper sleep. Self disciplined people make sure they get enough sleep daily. Remove temptation. Most self disciplined people remove the temptations for their lives. Whether you are trying to avoid social media to get more work done, create a budget, or stop smoking, removing temptation will be the quickest way to help develop the discipline needed to avoid the objects that are keeping you from your goal. Long term thinking One thing that highly disciplined people have is an ability to think in terms of the end game. Long term thinking allows you to achieve your goals. Gratification delay is a key factor in success. A personal development blog, Dumb Little Man, highlights this with the example of going to the gym. 
While the daily task may not appeal to the undisciplined, those who are successful don't look at the daily task. They look at the end result. Honesty. The final and hardest factor in developing self discipline is honesty. Being brutally honest about your successes and failures is the only way that you can improve on the next project or attempt. It is easy to gloss over your failures. This common tendency to ignore our faults is not the best. Self discipline is the ability to be honest about your actions or behavior, even when that honesty may hurt you. If you have any of these traits, chances are you have some level of self discipline already. If you have all of these traits, you are probably a very disciplined person. Don't worry if these habits seem foreign to you. Self discipline is difficult. If it was, everyone would do it. Practice incorporating these things into your daily life. Get more sleep, eat healthier, become honest and realistic about yourself. If you can do these things, the rest is easy as pie. Ten key examples of self discipline. We often equate self discipline and willpower with deprivation. But the truth is that the ability to exercise self control can contribute to your happiness. Studies have shown there is a direct link between self discipline and financial security and the ability to attain goals. Often, it can make or break your ability to stick to your lifestyle changes, pursue relationships, and get that promotion you have been chasing for so long. The good news for anyone who isn't great with self discipline is that it can be learned, and here are 10 key examples of self discipline. The ability to resist. People who practice self discipline don't just excel at resisting temptation, they are smart enough to remove any trace of temptation from their lives. That goes for distractions, too. There is a lot of self discipline required to put your phone away and get to the task at hand or to turn the television off and shift your focus to what really needs to be done. Those with self discipline have the ability to do that without thinking. This is something you can practice in small ways before you work up to the bigger temptations in your life. For example, If you're a sucker for junk food, then remove any trace of it from your home. Eat well. How is this an act of self discipline? Well, your blood sugar might have more to do with your resolve than you think. When it dips, not only does your focus suffer, but your brain isn't functioning at optimum performance. It also means you're more likely to make the wrong decisions. Even if they are normally easy for you. Plus, you end up grumpy. Don't just eat well, be sure to eat regularly, too, and that will require some planning. It can be uncomfortable. If you want to improve your self discipline, you will need to change your routine, and not only can that be awkward, it is often uncomfortable, too. Unfortunately, A lot of the decisions we make are based on habit rather than the actual process of decision making, which means bad habits can be difficult to break. Therefore, shaking things up will give you a better chance of breaking bad habits and building new healthy ones. Schedule rewards. Yes, even adults need rewards, and self discipline doesn't mean total deprivation. So, make sure you reward yourself and make time for treats and breaks. Learn to forgive. When you are learning to practice self discipline, you will experience bumps. When you are faced with a setback, you must learn to forgive yourself for your slip up and then move on. Rise to the occasion. There are different schools of thought as to whether self discipline is a finite or abundant resource. 
believing it to be abundant often serves as a self fulfilling prophecy. It means you balance your workload more appropriately and are ready to rise to the occasion when it presents itself. Time management Part and parcel of rising to the occasion is knowing how best to manage your time. This is a great example of self discipline. You manage your workload and have the energy to tackle everything that's on your plate. Exercise The ability to exercise when you could be doing fun stuff is a true act of self discipline. Every time you choose to work out, you are choosing health and wellness instead of other pursuits. Sleep Like diet and exercise, a good night's sleep is something that fuels your ability to practice self discipline. You're more likely to make the wrong decisions and give in to distractions and temptations when you're exhausted. Follow through. Want to be self disciplined? Learn to follow through, those with self discipline always do. Evaluating your personal boundaries. First step in self discipline. We hear a lot of talk about how someone doesn't have the willpower necessary to make the right decision, whether it's eating fruit instead of candy or ordering a salad instead of a burger. When we frame it like that, it makes sense that we buy into this premise that some people are born with endless self discipline, while others just aren't. Remember this self discipline is learned. The first step is evaluating your personal boundaries. Establishing your boundaries. So many of us grew up believing that treating others with kindness is a virtue, it's nice to be nice, and we often go out of our way to please others. Probably because we thrive on the positive feedback that comes with those types of behaviors. Sadly, for many, This is where self worth is rooted. It's all about putting others first. Then you get to a point where you can't seem to understand why everyone gives you extra work, why people turn up at your door without asking first, why people continue to insert themselves long after their time was up. It's stressful and increases the likelihood of a burnout. It puts others off, too. When you can't get your priorities right and give your time and yourself to everyone all the time. The problem here is boundaries. What are personal boundaries? They are the limits that you set with others, they indicate what behaviors are acceptable or unacceptable. Knowing your boundaries is the first step to unlocking your self worth. Self worth is not the same as self esteem. The former is about finding your intrinsic value. Knowing this can increase your awareness of your boundaries in line with your spiritual worth, intellectual worth, physical worth, social worth, and emotional worth. Know this you are entitled to believe as you wish, so is everyone else. You are entitled to think your thoughts and own your opinions. You are entitled to your personal space. You are entitled to have your own friends and enjoy social activities. You are entitled to your emotions and feelings in any situation. There is a distinct difference between knowing those boundaries and actively setting them. The latter is not always easy and it is a learned skill. It can be incredibly difficult for anyone who grew up in a home where there were no boundaries. Additionally, you may have a high self esteem, yet still have low self worth. Four ways to set your boundaries Know your limit. You should clearly define your limits with your romantic partners, family members, friends, colleagues, and even strangers. You can identify your limits by thinking about the experiences you have been through in the past that left you angry, frustrated, or uncomfortable. 
It may be helpful to create a chart that outlines your boundaries for each type of relationship in your life. Assertiveness. So, you know your limits and you've stated your boundaries, but what next? You have to follow through. So, if someone crosses your personal boundaries, you have to assert yourself. This can be scary for anyone who isn't accustomed to doing so. There are ways you can build your skill, though, and in easy ways. For example, if you were overcharged in the store, point it out. If a waitress didn't get your order right, don't be afraid to point it out and get what you ordered. Tell people when they're pushing you beyond your comfort zone in personal discussions. Practice. When you start practicing assertiveness, you may worry that you are coming off as rude. However, you are simply affirming the boundaries that you have set. It is about being honest with others and standing up for yourself. If you don't tell someone that something makes you uncomfortable, then how will they know to correct their behavior? Prepare to ignore. Don't be afraid to ignore someone who is actively crossing your boundaries after you have set them and asserted yourself. This is an act of self-care and shows you value yourself. Harness the power of focus. It doesn't matter whether you're just another cog in the wheel or the CEO. Your thought process can influence those around you as can your actions, and it's up to you whether you choose to embrace failure or strive for success. Like most people, you probably often come up with great ideas on how to correct negative patterns. Unfortunately, those brilliant ideas get pushed aside because of everything else going on. You struggle to multitask your way through the day and wonder why nothing ever changes. This is where the power of focus comes in. Without focus, life and work can become very disorganized. If you see something that can or should be be changed for the good, then give it your focus. Tell your team, your boss, the organization, the family that this is going to be your focus. If you plan on shifting your focus to improving communication within the company, then you need to ensure it's brought up in each and every meeting that you attend. It should feature on your goals, and you should have a plan in place that is measurable. Once you do this, you will suddenly realize that you are far more sensitive to the problems that others are experiencing. Why? It isn't because those issues are increasing. It's because you have harnessed the power of focus, and you are truly hearing what others are saying. If you have the right mindset, then you will be encouraged by the progress. Achieving true focus. Can you think of a time you've been incredibly focused on something? A strange thing happens. Suddenly, the typical obstacles standing in your way mean nothing to you as you close in on your goal. You are hyper aware of everything around you, but your focus is unshaken. No matter the obstacle, you find a way to overcome it because you are so locked onto that target at the end of the long road that you view everything through a different lens. Are you looking to improve your focus and avoid distractions and procrastination? Try these strategies. Take time out to get some perspective. You may sometimes be in need of a reality check, but who you turn to for it is an important decision. You want to speak to someone who is supportive, willing to talk tough, and invested in success. That may be your partner, mentor, or a straight shooting friend. No matter who it is, you need people like this on your side. Focus on those positives. We are all guilty of getting caught up in something that is going wrong, even though everything else is going right. In moments like this, it's important to grab hold of the positives. So, 
Take time out to create a list of everything that is going well to realign your focus where it belongs. Know when to take action. Allowing your focus to move away from the right target often invites negative emotions and leaves you feeling overwhelmed. Take action to take control power and empower yourself, whether it's inviting someone in to collaborate or employing the help of an assistant. Don't allow those feelings to fester. When you identify them, take action to mitigate them. Practice the art of self care. There is nothing more important to your focus than self care. When you are exhausted, stressed out, or hungry, you aren't going to be performing at your best. You may have noticed that you're fighting fit when you've had a good night's sleep, you're eating well and exercising often. These are acts of self care that will keep you healthy, focused, and resilient. Harness the power of self discipline. There are many successful people who tout self discipline as the key to success. Whether the success is derived from home life or personal achievement, Self discipline seems to be the cornerstone of this achievement. What does it take to have the levels of self discipline necessary in order to become successful? Know your weaknesses. When working on a difficult project or long term goal, it can be difficult to understand what keeps us from achieving our dreams. One of the best ways to get through this is to understand and identify your weaknesses. The weaknesses are the things that keep you distracted from achieving your goal. Entrepreneur recommends that you acknowledge your shortcomings, whatever they may be. People often deny that they are anything but perfect. We have a habit as a people to gloss over our mistakes and highlight our successes. The only way to gain self discipline is to be brutally honest about your failures so that you can avoid repeating them in the future. One of the best ways to avoid repeated failures is to work on environmental management. Remove all temptation. One of the largest hurdles in self discipline is the temptation to do anything other than the task at hand. In office life, this temptation may be the desire to surf social media rather than work on an important project. In weight loss, this may be the urge to eat candy out of the office candy dish. No matter what the temptation is, Forbes suggests removing it will be more helpful to you than allowing it to remain. If you're at work and attempting to avoid social media, it may be difficult. Installing a Facebook blocker on your computer will remove the temptation. You are no longer able to access the social media site and can focus on other things. If your cell phone becomes problematic with all the social media notifications, simply turn it to silent mode. The easy removal of temptation allows you to focus on the things that are important. Over time, you will develop the self discipline to not need those technological blocking tools. Have a reason why. When working on a long term project or goal, having the ability to endure can become difficult. It is especially difficult if you don't remember the reasons why you are maintaining such strict discipline. Self discipline is rarely defined as fun and usually involves sacrifice. Because of this, knowing why you're sacrificing can help you through the hard times. Write down all the reasons you are trying to achieve your goal. Whether it is personal success, professional satisfaction, or physical health, all reasons should go on this list. You can then use your list of reasons why you are sacrificing in moments of weakness and temptation. If you are trying to get a promotion at work, late hours at the office can begin to wear on you. If you don't remember that the reason that you want the promotion is to have better health care for your family and less financial stress, then it will be easier to leave when you should stay. 
Keep your list of reasons that to your sacrificing close to you so that you can use them when you need. It won't be easy. Nothing about achieving great personal success is easy. Ask anyone who has hit a major goal and they will tell you it took self discipline. Self discipline means doing things that you should even when you don't want to. Following these three suggestions will help you stick to the plan even in moments of temptation. Identify your failures, remove temptation, and know the reasons you need to hit your goal. If you can keep these three steps in mind, you will easily develop self discipline necessary to achieve your goal. Self discipline doesn't happen overnight, so be forgiving when you make slips or mistakes. Getting right back on track after a mistake and following the three steps will get you closer to your goal and even beyond success. Is self control eluding you? We can thank the prefrontal cortex for self control, and it's what separates us from animals and our ancestors. We have the ability to quash our impulses in order to achieve long term goals. This allows us the ability to plan, analyze alternative ideas, and for the most part, enables us to avoid acting in a way we will regret later. When you flex your self control muscles, it is generally referred to as willpower. It allows us to focus our attention and it drives achievement. While we may not know whether willpower is finite or not, what we do know is that willpower makes demands on our mental energy. This, of course, could explain why when you feel stressed, you are more likely to head to the vending machine for a candy bar as opposed to when you're riding a high. If you struggle with self control, we have good news for you. You can improve your ability, and here is how. Improving your self control. Big picture thinking. It is far easier to practice self control when you are able to look at the big picture. When you get snowed under by the little things, it can be difficult to overcome the minutia. For example, when you are working on a big project, you will find yourself easily frustrated by all the steps necessary to achieve the end goal. However, those steps are necessary to achieve the big picture and show you are capable of self control by using that to avoid a loss of motivation. Sleep is key. You might not understand how sleep plays a role in your self control, but it does. A lack of sleep makes you more likely to lose track of your self control and give in to all types of behavior that you wouldn't normally engage in. A study from the University of Washington found that a lack of sleep made people more likely to practice unethical behaviors, like falsifying receipts. R and R. We're often told to get on with it or just do it, but a relaxed state is far more appropriate for exercising self control. As noted above, stress is a primer for making bad decisions, so it stands to reason that taking some much needed time for rest and relaxation will only serve you well. Exercise You don't need to dedicate all of your spare time to the gym. If you can make time to enjoy moderate exercise in short bouts, then you can boost your self control. As we know, it's the prefrontal cortex that controls your self control, and exercise increases oxygen and blood flow to this particular region of the brain. Of course, this gives you a helpful boost in exercising self control, so always make time to get some exercise in. Support. If you know you have a problem with self control, check out the many apps out there that can help you out. Whether it's an app that will keep your writing on track, one that will drive your fitness goals, you struggle with expenses and need a financial planner, or you need a food journal to drive you. 
Know yourself. Self control is the cornerstone of emotional intelligence. Therefore, the best way for you to manage your impulses and the emotions that you experience is to know yourself. For example, do you tend to react rashly? Do you find yourself unable to control your chatter once you get started? Are you calm and collected in stressful situations? Are you exceedingly patient? Knowing your strengths and opportunities can be a key to unlocking your ability to exercise self control. If self control is eluding you, you can take back the power and learn how to harness it to your benefit. Self Discipline 101 When you hear the term self discipline, what is your immediate response? For a lot of people, they think about resisting urges, fighting, and repressing something that we want or want to do. It's a negative connotation that can affect your ability to practice self discipline. When you believe you're forcing yourself to do something against your will, it's difficult to want to jump aboard. Self discipline is the ability to turn the television off to focus on something that needs to be done, to get out of bed instead of hitting snooze repeatedly, to make the right choices instead of giving in to temptation. We need to reframe how we look at it as a whole. Creating self discipline. The world would be a better place if it's something that we were born with, unfortunately. Self discipline is a learned trait. You may have fallen into the belief that it's a mark of good character or that it just shows you were raised right. However, it is the same as the rest of the human traits in existence. Some people are naturally better at it than others are. If it's not something that you are presently good at, don't let that get you down. It isn't proof that you're not a good person or that others are better than you. Many criminals possess self discipline and they use that in their bid to escape the long arm of justice. Likewise, many people who don't have self discipline are kind and caring. Why is it so tough for people, though? There are some things you must believe in to build your self discipline. The first being that the choices you are faced with and attempting to resist only really exist in a moment. The second being that the right choice, which isn't always the easiest choice, will provide you with more gratification in the long run, thus making up for the fact that you missed on that moment of pleasure earlier. It's difficult to come to terms with that second point because telling your brain there is greater pleasure further down the line can be a hard sell when you know you are seconds away from making a decision that will provide you with instant pleasure. Especially when you think about how the long term pleasure may not come to fruition, yet the wrong choice now is a guarantee. Your brain can be convincing, which makes it challenging to overcome it to make the right choices. Something that is key to self discipline is having strong self esteem and building a strong relationship of trust with yourself. If you don't have these things, it can be difficult to beat your brain when faced with obstacles. Luckily, you can learn self discipline in steps, and it starts with the small steps. Start with the little things. Think of the smallest steps possible. Those you can say no to further a larger goal. It could be absolutely anything, such as turning the television off, putting your phone down, and spending some quiet time with yourself before bed. It could be choosing water instead of soda with lunch. Resist the temptation and see how it feels. Take a note of how you feel and the thoughts you experience as you resist because it's those that are trying to sabotage you. Unfortunately, this is not something you are wired for. It's all about trusting yourself, growing your self esteem, and regularly practicing self discipline. 
Learning how to say no to yourself in that moment is key to developing the skill of self discipline. Is your self discipline lacking because of a self esteem issue, or do you struggle in the moment to tell your brain the pleasure later will be worth the wait? Why self discipline is key to success? For every act of self discipline, there is a reward. I suppose, in one way, that's the beauty of life, for if you sow, so should you reap. If you act honestly, fairly, and with patience for others, you will receive rewards in multiples. If you give more often than you expect to gain in return, then your reward will always be more than expected. There is a key word here, though, and that is discipline, and the rewards aren't instant. The slow process of success. Everything in life that is of value will require your attention, due care, and an ounce of discipline. Whether it's your actions or your thoughts, we act with discipline. It can be a challenge to practice discipline, though, and the biggest reason for that is that the entire concept is built around delayed gratification. Initially, there will be no gratification nor will there be any results to view. It required the repetition of the correct behaviors until eventually, they pay dividends. Self discipline isn't glamorous either, which is why people often give up and move on instead of getting their head down and working at it. For example, When applying a new marketing strategy in business, it's going to require persistence. It won't be exciting to repeat the same tasks required to maintain a presence within the market, but it is a necessary part of achieving success. Additionally, you may hate the idea of being on every conference call that crops up, but that behavior is one that you must engage in and endure if your job requires teamwork and interaction. Self discipline isn't always getting the glamorous tasks or exercising the best bits of your imagination, it is often the most mundane activities. There may be nothing fun about a large amount of research or carrying out training, but these are simple acts of self discipline that further you in your career or life. Sure. Drinking beer with your friends is far more fun than getting up off the couch and hitting the gym, but only one of those is an act of self discipline, which will help you achieve the success you yearn for. It is in the accumulation of these mundane jobs that you eventually reach the level of success that you have been chasing. To achieve that success, you will often need to shift your priorities to fall in line with the priorities of others. It may require you pushing your pride aside and channeling your passion and energy into understanding your priorities so that you can get the right balance in life. It's impossible to achieve success when you don't have your priorities right. That stands for whatever it is you're chasing. If you want to be a successful romantic partner, then your priorities should reflect that, just as your priorities should reflect your want to further your career if that's what you strive for. The ultimate commitment. Learning self discipline is not only the key to your success, it is also the key to unlocking who you are as a person. It is the biggest commitment you can make in your journey to success. Self discipline is committing yourself to making the necessary contributions to whatever it is you're chasing. You have to be dedicated to these duties and think of them as labors of love as opposed to chores. They may be a lot of little things, but those little things add up to one great, big thing, and that is your success. In that success, you will find that your ability to practice self discipline hasn't just contributed to your success. It has also grown your character. Why you say yes when you want to say no? How often do you find yourself saying the word yes out loud when your brain is screaming no, no, no? 
Toddlers say no to just about everything, yet when we reach adulthood, it's suddenly one of the hardest words to utter. Why is that? Why are you always saying yes when you are desperate to say no? You feel bad about saying yes. You feel disappointed with yourself for saying yes, and you start to resent the person who asked the favor in the first place. Why you say yes when you mean no? There is a multitude of reasons that you may be saying yes to everything, even though you really want to say no. Here are just a few of those reasons. You're a people pleaser. This is probably one of the most common ones. You say yes because you know that you're helping someone out. You're making them happy, and part of you is worried what your friend, family member will think of you if you say no. You don't want to hurt anyone. You can't overcome the feeling that you will upset someone by saying no, that you will disappoint them and shade their view of you. You are plagued by guilt. How can you say no to someone you love, admire, respect? You will look and feel selfish. You are caught off guard. It's difficult to say no when someone surprises you with their request. You stammer and search your brain for an excuse, and when you can't find one, you say yes. It's an authority figure. It can be difficult to say no to someone who holds power over you because you worry that their view of you will be shaded, that it could affect your job and your ability to progress in your career. It feels reciprocal. You say yes because you believe the person would do it for you if the situation was reversed. It's about power and duty. Saying no shows weakness, and if someone senses weakness, they'll go for the jugular. We often strive to create this picture of ourselves in the eyes of others, a need for other people to view us as good. We want people to see that we care about other people and people who are making a contribution, helpful and kind. Yet. It's vital that you take care of yourself and prioritize your wants and needs too. When you say yes, even though you mean no, you're increasing your stress levels, thus sapping your energy, decreasing your self-esteem, and increasing resentment. You should be able to see the difference between this type of yes and a genuine yes. When you say yes and truly mean it, you give it your full focus and energy. The key is striking a balance between your needs and those of others. So, when you are faced with a question, favor, or demand on your time, then you need to check in with yourself about your needs and whether your energy levels and schedule have room for more. When you deliver, you know you don't need to offer excuses or apologies. Be direct with your no, and remember, no now is far better than resenting someone down the line. It may be tempting to avoid the inevitable by saying you'll think about it, but that's only going to make you more stressed. Start by practicing your nose, whether it is in the mirror or using a friend. You're not a bad person for saying no and putting your needs first.